Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants Hangout. My name is Joe Grabowski, and I'll be your host for today. For those who have been following along, we're celebrating uh, the adventure of a new year uh, by connecting with uh, adventurers and explorers from all over the world. It's been a ton of fun so far. We have a lot more events uh, coming up as the month continues. Today, I'm really excited. We're connecting with Crystal Wright. Crystal is an adventure sports photographer from Queensland, Australia. Right now, she's living a semi nomadic lifestyle on her quest to capture unique moments in extreme sports, expeditions, and adventures all over the world. So whether she's camping in a frozen fjord uh, for a month with, in the Arctic with 23 base jumpers, paragliding in the Karakoram Range in Pakistan, or sleeping on the back of a yacht on the Great Barrier Reef, she is known for pushing herself to the extremes to bring the world of adventure and exploration to the public. So Crystal, it's so awesome to have you joining in. You're a veteran of Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants, and we always love to catch up and just see what you've been up to and the students love your pictures. So thanks so much for joining us today. That is no worries. Uh, yeah, good morning. Uh, I will apologize in advance for my yawning. Uh, a little bit on the earlier side for me. Uh, I love my sleep as well. Um, but I'm excited to join you guys. Uh, as uh, Joe said, please feel free to ask me any questions at the end. I guess I will start with a bit of a, I guess a little bit of a ramble about uh, how I became an adventure photographer, because it is definitely, you could say it's a very unique career. Uh, so I'm gonna share my screen and take you guys through a slideshow. Uh, let's see my entire screen. One moment, here we go. I believe that's all working. Okay, so welcome to what Crystal looks like when she is only uh, eight years old in this photo. Uh, this is me growing is just for those of you who know the East Coast in Australia. Uh, as I grew up, I had a few mishaps. Uh, I have definitely acquired some injuries and there's also accumulated a few stories with what I do. So this is me in China. Uh, I was 21 years old at the time and unfortunately in a mountain biking accident, I knocked out my front teeth. Uh, so there's some sometimes ah, sorry sometimes with what I do is there's with certain risk um, sometimes it doesn't always pay off in the way that I hope. Uh, but the funny thing is is that when I began my career I actually wanted to be a sports photographer. My original dream was I wanted to run the sidelines to the big events. So whether it was rugby, which so rugby. Uh, like the NFL, not not quite, uh, or the cricket, um, but definitely the Olympics. I, I thought I was down this career path where I wanted to be able to uh, photograph the Olympics. And so for a couple of years, I lived in Sydney and I would work for the newspapers and I used to get a real kick out of uh, seeing my images printed on the back page. But the problem with this is that after a couple of years, I no longer enjoyed the work that I did with the newspapers. I felt that my passion was changing. And in 2011, I decided to change everything. And that can be a very scary, uh, I guess, scary adventure because with whatever we choose to do in life, there are no guarantees. The only thing we can be certain of is change. And it was quite... It was quite a scary thing for me to do because I decided to leave Sydney. I I had no sort of the typical stability, so I no longer had an apartment to live in. I have now for the past seven years been living out of my car or living on friends' couches. And I choose to do that because I a home be there. And so it becomes quite transient. But the really cool thing about this day and age is that as you guys uh, you know, move through your school years is that there are new careers being created all the time. Things are always changing, which is super exciting to see. And what I encourage everyone to do is that if there's something that you're truly passionate about, something that really grabs you and inspires you to get outside or to or to learn to continue uh, education, then I always encourage anyone 100% to pursue that. Because the one thing that would hold a lot of people back is the fear of 
failure is actually not the worst thing. It's actually through failure that some of our greatest stories are told. And I can tell you through my career, I have failed so many times, whether it's been on photo projects or or certain gambles for me that haven't paid off, um, such as you know going on certain adventures or trips. But it's always been some of the best learning curves to establishing the career and, of course, creating the person that I am now. Uh, this photo here is actually the first time I went on a big expedition to Baffin Island, um, as Joe was quoting, when I was camping on a frozen fjord for uh, a month with these base jumpers from around the world. I'm sort of going to pass through some of these photos a little quickly um, and I'll finish off on one of my more recent adventures. But I guess the one thing, or not that I guess, I know that through these photos is that it'll give you a bit of a taste for some of the adventures that I've had. For example, this was uh, driving into northern Pakistan and in front here is the Katakoram Range, which is, in my opinion, one of the most impressive mountain ranges in the world. And this image here is actually when we were flying in paragliders above those same peaks. And Pakistan, in my opinion, has still been one of the coolest countries that I've ever visited. Uh, the people were incredibly hospitable um, and kind and generous. And the landscape is still something that I dream of. And depending on where you're from, I'm sure some of these mountains, they don't quite exist here in the States. There are some beautiful mountains in the West, hence why I'm out this way. but. Uh, yeah, the Middle East definitely has some of the coolest landscape I've seen. Uh, in fact, next week I'm heading back to Antarctica. Uh, each year I spend a couple of weeks working as a guide and next week I'll be working with National Geographic and Lindblad and I'll be teaching people how to take uh, photos down there. And Antarctica is definitely a special place. Uh, it's hard to put into words sometimes, especially when you see a scene like this, such as a moon rising behind an iceberg arch in Plano Bay, which is actually nicknamed uh, icebergs. And of course, the, the wildlife down there, typically I'm shooting adventure, but in this role with National Geographic and in teaching people, I get the opportunity to uh, entice my wildlife dreams. Uh, it's definitely a really cool place. Oops, sorry, went to free diving. Um, but yeah, going back to, uh, so yeah, I'll be down there for the next three weeks, but then my adventures will continue. And the one thing about being an adventure photographer is that I never wanted to be pinholed into a specific type, such as just a surf photographer or just a ski photographer. As you can see through my folio is that I love to be in the ocean. Uh, I love to be shooting free diving or surfing or um, and here's uh, a baby fur seal, which was supposed to come up early on the slides. Uh, but then, you know, the landscapes, um, I love shooting landscapes. And in fact, a lot of people will nickname my work uh, that I'm a landscape photographer, but sometimes I just happen to throw action figures in them. Um, and here, you know, shooting skiing. So definitely I'm taking on a lot of hats. And for me, I'm just excited about a lot of different sports. Uh, of course, rock climbing. It's And the cool thing about what I do is that I love the people that I meet because I tell people with adventure photography is that it's not so much a job, it's actually more so a lifestyle. And I always encourage those, if you wanted to pursue such a passion is that you have to make sure that you're getting in, and in it for the right reasons, that you're not motivated by a different agenda because I guess with adventure, if you're not in for the right reasons, it can be a dangerous decision to make because you definitely need a hundred percent focus in some of these activities. Uh, he was uh, a friend kayaking over waterfalls in uh, just on the border of Washington and Oregon. Uh, that was definitely a really fun creative project where that light that you see is actually coming from a flash uh, situated on a drone. Uh, sorry to rush over some of these, uh, I guess, technicalities. Uh, but here I just want to share quickly a couple of images of, um, I guess, the different hats that I take on. So this this here uh, is standing on South Georgia, and that's about 100,000 pairs of king penguins that you're seeing behind me. Uh, the big red jacket that is definitely not fitting me properly, that is a float jacket. So the idea was that if any of us guides were overboard, that jacket would act like a life jacket. 
hence the bulkiness. Uh, working uh, in the ski uh, world, uh, the tough thing for me is that if you can imagine when you are out skiing or snowboarding and then chucking a heavy, heavy backpack on, it definitely makes things challenging. Um, but that's what I have to do. Um, here is uh, just moments before I'm about to rappel over the edge in Tasmania. Um, I was photographing a very famous rock climb on the totem pole, which is a really cool piece of rock. Um, in fact, that was later in the shoot of me getting into position, uh, which was definitely a, a challenge in itself. I guess sometimes with the ideas I come up with is that I'm ready to take the risk of creating an idea and pursuing it. And I can tell you sometimes it definitely has not worked out, but for when it does all come together, it is one of the greatest feelings I've had. Now, traveling as a photographer means I don't exactly get to travel light. I am carrying multiple hard drives, camera lenses, uh, camera bodies, flashes. And then in the background, you can see that uh, solar panels, camping gear, ropes. Um, so I definitely have some heavy baggage with me as I travel around the world. In fact, even right now in this room with me, I have my ski bag, my ice climbing gear, of course, photography gear, uh, and then just the attire that comes with that. Um, here, before that totem pole shoot, you, this is an overview of some of the ropes and rock climbing gear that we were laying out as Sometimes you definitely, well, I definitely need to plan things out. Uh, let's see. And then this is National Geographic explorer, Sarah Marquis. Uh, she's a Swiss explorer who has walked some of the greatest distances on earth. Uh, I was lucky enough to join her um, for the final week of her expedition where she had spent three months crossing the Kimberleys in Northwestern Australia, um, which is to my opinion, it's one of my favorite places on earth. I think the Kimberleys are just magical. Um, but before I am going to allow everyone to ask me questions, the last adventure I wanted to share with you was actually uh, storm chasing in the Midwest uh, last summer. I was there directing a project for Canon Australia with Australian photographer Nick Moyer, who you see in this frame right now. And he has spent his career chasing storms and bushfires around the world. And it is quite the journey. In fact, it's probably one of the crazy adrenaline rushes that I've had. Um, this here is a dust storm that we're driving through in uh, Texas, just south of the Panhandle. And Mother Nature can definitely, definitely turn extreme. And, but again, I just, it was such a wild thing to witness. Um, there were points where we had 100 kilometer an hour winds, which I'm not sure for miles, I, I think, the teacher might have to convert that for me because I've never worked in the imperial system. Um, but yep, it's 100 kilometer an hour winds. So if you can imagine, you are getting blown off your feet. Uh, it was it was phenomenal to experience it, but also scary at times. Um, this was a moment actually where we witnessed our first tornado on the trip. Uh, we're up in southern Wyoming, and I can tell you, like for me. I mean, I've never seen one before and it was quite otherworldly. It just, from, like I've seen it in movies and clips and such, but to see it with my own eyes was definitely one of the most surreal experiences I've ever had. Uh, we spent over 12 days. We drove 8,000 miles. We drove everywhere from Texas, uh, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Kansas, Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico. So definitely too many miles in the car, but it was so wild to um, chase these systems. And what's exciting is that there will be a five minute short film coming out from this trip, hopefully next month. Um, I'll definitely be posting that to my channels when that film comes out. Uh, but again, I guess uh, with my career, and the one thing I wanted to emphasize again today is, or oh, two things is one is, not being afraid to take a risk on yourself. Uh, as I said, even if there is this daunting fear of uh, failure, is that uh, the worst thing that can happen is that you start, simply start again. And that's what I always thought with my career. There's always a chance, hell, even, even today, there's still a chance that things may not work out for me, but it's been worth um, taking that risk because I knew that if for some reason um, <laughs> things didn't work out, 
uh, is that I could always start pull my head down and try again because if it's something that you really want, you have to be working, willing to just give it your absolute everything. And as I said, um, though this is actually me, sorry, in front of a tornado forming, which I can tell you right now, I was definitely second questioning my position. Um, but also, as I said, like, it's really cool to see the different careers that are being created and it's happening every year, you know, new industries, uh, new opportunities to, you know, challenge the norm of what has been set. You don't have to be in an office nine to five. Um, you can definitely be outside pursuing a passion and making it work as a career. So as I come to the end of the slideshow, I'm going to go back to unshare my screen. Here we go. Um, yeah, uh, well, time goes fast. Hopefully um, I didn't ramble too much, but I'd love to open it up to questions. Um, hopefully, uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Crystal, thanks so much for sharing. That was that was awesome. Uh, those storm chasing pictures. It looks wild. I have a friend uh, who does that as well. It goes down to the Midwest and he's had some crazy times. It looks it looks amazing. And thank you so much for sharing your story and your passion and really just reinforcing for students that the world is so open. There's so much they can explore, see and do. Uh, and you don't have to have that conventional nine to five career path. You can go after what you love. So that's awesome. Definitely. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out. We have a few more classrooms who popped in. So uh, Mrs. Wood's class, uh, Mr. Jabot's class, and then uh, Mrs. Boyle's class, who is also joining us, um, <laughs> but we can't hear or see. Send in your questions via the YouTube chat sidebar. Or sorry, not the YouTube, the, the blue chat sidebar on the side. Send them in there, and I'll make sure that we work them in. You know, technology doesn't always cooperate. But let's uh, jump into one of our live classrooms right now. So let's see. Let's start off. Let's go to Mrs. Little's class. Uh, they're joining us from Dutton, Ontario, here in Canada. Let me get their microphone on, and let's see how they're doing today. How are we doing, boys and girls? Good. All right. Who's got a question to start us off? We've got Kara here. Hi, Kara. Was there ever a time when you couldn't, where you, when you thought you couldn't get away from one of the tornadoes? I uh, think, well, Mother Nature, is, she can definitely show you who's boss. And there was actually one day that I was definitely scared. We were in the Texas Panhandle, and uh, with our car, we were driving back and forth on these roads because above us, the sky, it looked like it was alive. Everything was just swirling, these black clouds just swirling. And my friend Nick, who was in the photo, he's been doing it for 20 years, but even he was a little bit worried this day. And we just, we couldn't tell where the tornadoes were gonna drop. So I was definitely thinking, oh God, I finally, you know, my mom's gonna be very angry at me. Um, but we decided to punch it. He was like, you know what, let's just take it, a risk we're going to go this way and then two tornadoes actually formed in front of us uh which was i mean exhilarating to see uh but thankfully for the most part for someone who like nick who's been doing it for many years he was very good at reading mother nature and putting us in typically safe well safe positions uh, but there's always an element of risk. Um, but there was definitely never uh, a situation where we felt that we were in the tornado's path. Um, but that's not to say that that can happen. All right, great question to start us off. And I'm just remembering Mrs. Painter's group uh, has to run shortly and they may have already had to, but they're in Salem, Virginia, and they sent me in a question via the chat sidebar. So let's make sure that we get that one in. And they're really curious about how you were able to repair uh the front teeth after that biking incident <laughs> well um i don't recommend um going to a hospital in rural china um uh, so uh when they knocked out the nerves were exposed in the back of my teeth and so we went to the hospital um it was one of the most horrendous experiences of my life and it turns out they had just shoved some cotton there so my nerves were completely dead within a day or two uh and so i finished my trip i had a whistle happening uh every time i said s 
And I came back to Australia and over the process of a month and a whole lot of money, I had to get seven crowns. Um, I do not recommend that procedure, uh, not unless you have to, but oh, the teeth, oh, that's been my worst injury. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Mrs. Jeffrey's class. They're joining us in Bradford, Ontario. Let's get their microphone on. How are we doing, boys and girls? Good. What three things do you always pack? Oh, what do I always pack? Uh, well, aside from cameras, which is all always with me. In fact, <laughs> I have my little speaker here. Um, it's one thing I can't live without, which is music on these trips. Uh, it's nice to have an escape sometimes in the tent from your friends. Um, but yes, I'm always packing my phone and a little speaker so I can play music. All right. And then just uh, checking the messages really quickly. Uh, Mrs. Boyle's class. So they are joining us from uh, Bedford, Nova Scotia. So here in Canada as well. They're wondering about uh, your favorite place to visit or the favorite adventure that you've been on. Do you have one? I don't have one because the challenge for me is always a different experience. Well, I think it, the same goes for anyone. And as the saying goes, well, it's, it's never better or worse. It's just different. And so it's, it's impossible for me. How could I ever compare, uh, you know, seeing penguins in Antarctica to flying above the cattle corn range in Pakistan to walking across the Kimberleys? Uh, and the funny thing for me is as soon as I start thinking about, well, wait a minute, where haven't I been and what else would I like to do? I can definitely tell you, I still have a, a huge, huge list um, of places that I would still wish to go and adventures I wish to uh, pursue. All right. Well, it's good to have that big list. It keeps life interesting, especially when you can tick them off. Definitely. I guess just to quickly, I just caught another question here from uh, the class. The most dangerous sea creature that I've encountered uh, well, the funny thing is, I know that I'm sure I've been in the water many times when there have been sharks, but I've never seen them. Um, they're just incredibly smart. Uh, but I have been in the water with sperm whales, and whilst I never felt in danger, uh, they can project one of the loudest sounds on Earth. And so there's always a risk of, huh, what if they had chosen to, you know, be in self-defense and project a sound? That would definitely kill me probably in an instant. Uh, but the funny thing is, is that I may have an opportunity in ESA to go wrestle a crocodile in Northern Territory. So I might have to update my answer in the next few months. All right. Well, I mean, most people don't have that in their day planner coming up, but that's pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's visit Mrs. Um, Belfield's class. They're joining us uh, from Sackville, Nova Scotia. So we have a few Nova Scotia classrooms today. Let's get their microphone on. How are we doing, boys and girls? Good! All right, who's got a question? Me. <laughs> What's your name? Mateo. What's your question? Um, have you ever photoed a celebrity? <laughs> like, taken a photo? I see, celebrity. I mean, I've met some incredible sports people, um, but if you're thinking of Hollywood, I have not um, I have not photographed any celebrities, but my friend who is also here in Oregon with me as I'm at a, an ambassador summit, he has gone climbing with Jared Leto, which I would say that's my closest claim to fame through him. <laughs> All right, perfect. And for those who might not recognize the name, he was the Joker in the Suicide Squad. So maybe maybe some of you might have saw that movie, but that's a good example, I think. Uh, awesome. Well, Mrs. Wood's class, I know that they're joining us. Uh, so they're in Toronto, Ontario. So if you have any questions, feel free to send those in via the chat sidebar. Now, Mrs. Painter's class in Virginia was wondering about um, how people could follow or keep in contact as you're on these adventures. How can people follow along? Uh, probably the most reliable platform is um, my Instagram. 
Um, I try to keep that up to date uh, with pictures and sometimes stories and such. Um, aside from that, uh, I guess for social media, I'm not very good on the other platforms. Um, and otherwise, it's my website. But generally, generally, my Instagram is actually probably the best source of information because I try to post up when I'm releasing new videos, uh, new stories, and where you can find articles that I've printed with magazines. Uh, so my Instagram, it's the at Crystal J Wright. Okay, perfect. And if any teachers didn't get that, I can send an email uh, after the Hangout as well. Let's swing back to Mrs. Little's class and see if they have another question for you. Have you ever saw a dolphin? I have seen many dolphins, think, uh, which is very lucky of me. Uh, but one of the coolest dolphins is the spinner dolphins. Uh, so if you have a chance to look them up online, when they, they get, they're very playful and they will jump out of the water and they will just spin like crazy. Um, but that's definitely one of the coolest dolphins I've uh, been able to swim with. All right. And if you've ever been in one of those, you always hear stories about the super pods where there's hundreds, even thousands. Have you ever been lucky enough to see that? Not yet. Um, in fact, one of the other speakers that night at the Nat Geo Nights, um, uh, what's his name? Felipe? Felipe? No. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to remember. Andre? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. He, if you um, go to his feed, holy mackerel, I am jealous of his adventures. He has been with a super pod with thousands of dolphins, and I, oh, I had a bit of envy um, in that moment. Yeah, he's doing some awesome filming in Costa Rica right now, so um the footage that's coming out daily from his instagram and i can share that with the students as well uh lots of cool video clips and, and videos from costa rica uh okay good question so let's go to back to mrs Jeffrey class your microphone's on number two number two um okay natalie nice and loud what has been your most challenging adventure I think we lost Crystal for a second. Her signal might have froze on us. So let's just, oh, I think she's back. Crystal, can you hear us? Most challenging adventure. Oof. Uh, tough one. Um, I have to think for a second. Oh, no. I can still hear Yeah. Okay. We, we lost. yeah, I can hear you. Um, I can see everyone just fine. <laughs> Perfect. We lost you for about maybe Wait, can you hear seconds. me? Yeah, but it looks like you're back now. Yep. Yeah. Hello? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's going on? I think why? the delay may have finally caught oh, up. Oh, why is my signal? Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, great. Okay, here we go. I think, yeah, we're back to live. I think so. Can you hear me? No. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, good. So that class was <laughs> wondering about your most challenging expedition. We lost you for a minute, but it looks like you're back. Yep, yep. Now it's back. Um, it seemed to be lag. Uh, yep, so most challenging expedition I've done, uh, I tell you what, um, Kayaking, I spent two months kayaking from Mongolia to Russia. And that expedition definitely had a lot of different challenges. I mean, first of all, paddling every day for two months, um, but then just the logistics and navigating the landscape safely and with the people that we met. There was one point that we were stopped and uh, arrested for the day by the Mongolian army uh, because they believe we had the incorrect permits. And thankfully, our guide, um, or not our guide, our translator, uh, was able to talk our way out of that trouble. But he said it was serious that they could have, you know, followed through with sending us to jail. Um, we're never quite sure what really happened, but uh, they did let us go. Um, we were very close to the Russian border, so they were just very, uh, very cautious of any strangers coming through. Uh, but yes, definitely that might be my most challenging expedition. All right, very cool. And I definitely think that you did a presentation with uh, some of the other women who were on the expedition. I think you might have done it at National Geographic. I think I remember seeing that video in the past. 
Yes. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, Mrs. Boyle's class is wondering, have you ever tried to pick up a new language while you were in one of the countries? Oh, I've tried many times. Uh, and generally I always pick up at least very um, basic phrases. Uh, but the problem for me is I always forget because I don't, I stop practicing. So I've definitely forgotten my Mongolian words. Um, I still remember the odd Russian, uh, but I always wish to pick up Spanish. If anything, if there's one thing I can recommend, picking up Spanish, that is definitely a very useful language. Um, so I keep trying and, and failing miserably, but I do try. All right, let's visit Mrs. Uh, Belfield's class again. Your microphone is on. Um, what would, what do your parents think of you doing that? I have my mom once and she asked me, uh, she was like, Crystal, like, do people ever ask the question that you're asking me now? And I said, well, yes, actually I get asked this quite often. And she was curious. She's like, well, what do you tell them? And I said, well, I'm very stubborn and you know, you know that you can't change my mind. As soon as I want to do something, I'm going to go do it. Uh, and I get my stubbornness from her. So no one else to blame but that side of the family. Uh, but she turned to me and she said, well, Crystal, it's not that I know that I can't change your mind. It's the fact that I don't want to change your mind because I'm proud of what you do. So my mom has actually thankfully always supported me 110%. Uh, and I guess, yeah, she's probably my number one fan. All right, that's awesome. It's good to have some good support and most parents are that way, I think, once they get over the initial <laughs> the initial thoughts of what you're doing. So that's awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see, Mrs. Jeffrey's class. Yeah. If we can squeeze in one more time. Do you have any advice for someone who is afraid to try something daring? To try something daring? <laughs> Let's see, what is that? I heard that question right, yes? Yeah, advice for someone who's thinking about trying something. Okay, what would be my advice? I would say the very, I think an exciting thing in life is when you do feel your heart racing a thousand miles an hour. Um, I fear that a lot of people in life, they want to be comfortable all the time. And they're, they're scared to actually feel those feelings. And so if you're about to try something daring and your heart's going a thousand miles an hour, I actually think that's an exciting feeling to have. Um, I think it's important to feel scared, to feel angry, to feel sad, anything. Um, and so as you're going to, you know, depending on what daring thing you're about to try, I would say don't be afraid. Embrace, embrace those feelings and just simply try. Um, I think we, you know, it's important to be challenged because if you want to know what you're capable of, sometimes you're going to have to step outside that comfort zone. And I guess sometimes you just got to take a deep breath and uh, just have a go. All right. Great advice. Mrs. Boyle's class is wondering about um, a tip or two for photography. Yeah, I see this. I want to wrap up two questions they've asked because one of them up earlier, they said, uh, when do you think you'll stop exploring? Which I was, I've been dying to answer this question. Uh, I don't think any of us ever stop exploring. I mean, it's all about, um, I mean, how we, uh, I guess, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a bit early. Uh, how we interpret this question. And so whilst my, I guess, referring to my, my career and definitely taking it to, um, to the extreme, I'm not sure. I mean, for right now, I love what I do. And I don't know, like maybe in five years, I don't feel the same or in 10 years, or I just keep going until I can no longer walk. Um, but I love to explore. And sometimes exploring might just mean daily things. Maybe it's here, yeah, like I'm in Bend, Oregon, and I'm excited just to explore this town because uh, I've not visited here properly before. So I think exploring doesn't have to mean extreme or, um, yeah something crazy it I think all of us should be encouraged to explore daily um, because yeah you can have so much fun in your own backyard uh, and then as for tips for photography I'd say right now if, if any of you guys are you know taking photos with your phone or a little camera is just have fun with it 
Um, it's so important to have fun. And sometimes I've seen kids pick up a camera and take way cooler photos than me um, just because you're having fun with it. Uh, yeah, that would be my number one tip for that. All right, perfect. And just a really quick question. When you started, was digital pretty much there and going or did you start with film? Uh, when I went to university, I was the first class to go through as a full digital era. And we did practice with some film, uh, but I was, yeah, part of the first digital era. All right. Uh, Mrs. Little's class, I'm gonna turn your microphone, microphone on, then we'll visit Mrs. Belfield's one more time before we run out of time today. Microphone's right there. Have you ever seen an avalanche? I have seen many avalanches, but thankfully from afar. Um, I would be uh, terrified if I was ever in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, but one cool thing about going to Antarctica is that because it's summer, it actually can get quite hot some days. And so from afar, whether I'm on the ship or um, even on land sometimes, we've witnessed glaciers carving, um, uh, also of course avalanches from far away. And the crazy thing with the carvings is that, so that's when like huge chunks of ice are just collapsing the water and that can actually create um, some very serious waves. And there's one point where I was almost caught out by these waves. I was trying to rescue a Zodiac and we had to actually um, leave the Zodiac and this huge wave just came in because this energy coming through the water, it just looks like a big lump in the ocean. But as soon as it comes with the shallow, um, a shallow shoreline next thing the whole energy just pushed up and created like a mini tidal wave um so i've had some close calls all right mrs belfield's class your microphone's on for one more question hi have you ever gotten lost <laughs> i have gone lost many times <laughs> i definitely um I, yeah, I, I get lost a lot, <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I have GPS and maps and, and all that, but I think it's a lot of fun getting lost. Um, uh, but yeah, hopefully not in a dire consequence. All right. Well, first of all, classrooms, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. As per usual, your questions were awesome. Uh, Crystal, a huge thank you to you for hanging out with us. I always look forward to our hangouts. You've always got yeah. great stories and great advice for the students. Um, lots more coming up. Uh, have fun in Antarctica, and thanks again uh, for joining us today. No worries. Thanks so much. All right. Last thing we'll do, we'll turn the microphones on, let the classroom say goodbye and thank you, and then we'll sign off for today. You can get louder if you want. All right. Thanks again, everyone. Crystal, safe travels and uh, we'll connect soon. Thanks everyone. <laughs>